Hello and welcome back to Dust in History. I've been lucky enough to visit the Titanic experience twice in Belfast. This image I absolutely love uh, and I saw it when I was there and it's the propellers of the Olympic which was the sister ship to the Titanic. Today I'm going to take you more through my colouring process and less uh, through my photo restoration process. As you can see I always start with good reference, I particularly like this image. And the first thing I want to do is adjust with a curves control the luminance of my image to better match the target one or the reference that I've found. So by knocking the colour out temporarily I can set the luminance by eye with a curves control so that my image of the Olympics propellers look more like the image of that found reference or the luminance of the found reference I should say. And turning that off that then becomes a good basis or a departure point for me to start adding colour. Now what I'm going to do, because I have no idea where I'm going yet, is I'm just going to fish around and one of the first things I'll do is work with gradient maps. And so by looking at the different parts of the image, like the colours of the propeller or the colours of the red paint job on the uh, reference, I can start setting up some rough colour maps and using gradient ramps and then you'll see what I'll do is mask these gradient ramps into a few different areas and that'll put broad colour into the areas I want to work on. And the nice thing about this is you can see my colour ramps have cool colours where the uh, highlights of the sky are reflecting into the paint and warmer tones and all sorts of different kind of um, colour variations. So what I'm not doing, which I, I never do, is just applying a flat red, a flat yellow for the for the steel of the propellers, a flat and grey for the concrete. I'm trying to already, right from the start, bring colour variation into the work. So now I'll quickly select the areas of interest that I want to mask each one of those colour ramps into and I'll make some um, quick masks and then, I mean this is pretty rough, but it's just a sort of colour by numbers quickly that the whole palette just to get an idea of where I'm going. And I'll continue to work in this way, less with masks at this point, but more with just blocking in areas of colour and seeing what kind of colour balance or what kind of um, colour palette I ultimately want to end up with. And then I'll start working over it and over it, bringing more and more refinement and more uh, colour based on observation into the, into the plate. And you can see even when I do skin tone here, I like to do sort of more flushed cheeks more sort of standard skin tone on the face and then sort of more blue grey on the um, flat planes of the cheeks and the forehead and the bridge of the nose where they're looking up into the sky and their shiny faces are reflecting more of that uh, neutral sky colour.
As you can see while I work, I'm trying to bring as much color complexity into the image as I can. And uh, you can sort of see underneath the, the um, boat where it's painted red near the floor, that's quite a flat red. And it, it really is pretty ugly and, and not very interesting to look at. So by looking at the ground, you can see there's lots of blues and, and warm notes from the, uh, the dirty concrete. And I think those colors should be bounced back up into the paint job uh, underneath. And you'll see I'll get to that here. So hopefully the ship still looks red, but it's red with more, a more complex palette. Now when you have a sky as hot as this, uh, and I know you would probably recognize this from your own photography, uh, quite often the blue of the sky leaks or bleeds into the colors around any area of high contrast. So here you can see I've painted a little bit of a kind of a royal blue kind of color just to fringe around the, uh, the, the boat just to see if I liked it or not. And I thought it turned out well enough that I've actually decided to make it a little bit more formal. And so I've made a selection set here of the sky and I'm using a um, an effects tool here just to set up a, a, a glow outside that as, a, as an effects layer. And then I'll turn that uh, selection transparent. So all I'm left with is a contour of faint blue tracing around everything that touches the hot sky.
Now it's around here I've actually got the colors quite wrong. This um, big rudder assembly is not uh, black or, or gray as I thought it was, it's actually red. And right at the end of the video you'll see I'll come back and adjust that as well as the caps or the pointy bits on the, on the very center of the propellers, they were red as well. I clearly didn't do enough research on the actual ship before I started work. <laughs> Now here, looking at this dry dock, I figured a little bit of this limey green moss would be nice. Even though these propellers were made of bronze metal, you can see where the highlights hit them, where the sky is really bright on the propeller. I'm actually putting some more of that blue color of the sky. Um, the actual sky in the image here is white, but if you were to stop that down, it would turn into the blue of, the, um, of a blue sky. So I figured that was a nice thing to do. And I'm trying to bring a little bit of blue into the shiny water that's on the planks in the foreground. Anywhere I see a bright highlight, I'm trying to introduce that blue just faintly. I've done this image a little backward from how I normally work. I've actually started on the color first and now I'm you know, I'm happy with <laughs> where I'm at with the color. I'm going to spend the time despotting it. And it's about now I think I'm getting close to done that I realize I've made some mistakes. These little areas are steel and not red, although I couldn't see where they ended because the image was too dark. 
and these little caps are the red bits I was telling you about. Even the um, bolts were painted red, as far as I can tell from the reference I've found. Again, on those highlights of the bolts, I'm going to go back and paint a little bit of blue into that area. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope uh, you learned something. I always learn something every time I do this and I had a great time working on this image. I'll see you next time. Thanks.